Hello friends, this is Guru Oja and we are playing Brigandin The Legend of Runercia today. The developer sent me the free key and I'm trying this game and promote it. The official description about the game is the continent of Runercia is home to six major powers with more than 40 bases, 100 knights and 50 types of monsters. Select a ruler, organize knights and monsters into troops and conquer enemy bases. Okay, this game is developed by Happynet and Matrix game companies. Uh, it's something like a Japanese RPG, JRPG, and I will play this game for the first time. So let's try it. Legend of Renertia or Renertia main mod. Choose one of the six powers and reclaim the pages of the Legend of Renertia as you aim to unify the legend or the other modes. Alternate chapter, a challenge mod, an origin chapter, a creative mod. I think these two mods are uh, have come with uh, have added to the game with new. Um, new version, new edition uh, and I think this is a uh, PSX PlayStation game uh, and now it's in PC and in Steam so you can play these two new mods but first I'm gonna play the training, the tutorial mod and I will learn about the basics of gameplay like troop movement or invading enemy bases basic battle rules and controls and etc. So, Let's start, but the B button is the confirm button, so it's somehow strange. So, let's check out the basics. Main mode is where you select a nation. Power to play is while you unify Renersia by occupying all the bases on the map. Okay. Other nations are also trying to conquer Renersia as well. Be sure to monitor the map carefully as you guide your nation. If all your nation's bases are lost, then it's game over. Gameplay is divided into organization phase where preparations are made and an attack phase where invasions occur. One session, one season consists of one organization phase and one attack phase. Okay, I understood. The organization phase is where you prepare for battles by summoning monsters, organizing your troops and positioning them at bases for invasions or def defense. A horse icon at the top left of the map screen indicates you are in the organization phase. Got it. During the attack phase, troops will battle to control bases. Other enemy nations will also fight each other during this phase. Defeat an enemy nation in the direct combat to occupy their base. If there are no knights in the target base, you occupy the base immediately. A sword icon at the top left of map screen indicates you are in the attack phase. Alright, so you're gonna check all these things. Let's start. Organization phase. Yeah, this game looks like um, some classical JRPG games. Welcome to the world of Brigand and the Legend of Renertia. This tutorial will explain the controls while you play the game. Current tutorial section and progress is indicated by the display above. This tutorial is a total of 13 sections. Press B button. So. Every completed objective contributes to your tutorial progress. Keep it up. In this game, you select one of the six nations to play as and unify Renertia by occupying all the bases on the map. Each nation has bases within its territory. If you wait an enemy's base, a battle begins on the battle map, win this battle and your nation will occupy the base. Yeah, this game looks like uh, Three Kingdoms uh, romance games and uh, some clone of those game type. The battles are heart of this game, but first you will have to position troops as adjunct to an enemy base in order to invade. Try moving a few to Lawrence now. First, let's review information about the base at Lancaster, where troops are currently stationed. Yeah, this game is a turn-based strategy game, yeah. When the cursor is on a base, the base's information is displayed on the bottom left of the screen. Pay close attention to the number of rune knights and monsters stationed there. There are two rune knights and five monsters stationed there. You can also see the total combat 
power of troops at this base, yeah. Two rune knights and five masters, okay. While the cursor is still on the base, press B button to open the base menu. Next objective is to move troops, so highlight move with left stick or directional pad and select it with the B button. Move command. Move command. Level 5 Prince Rubino and level 17 Knight Shizzler. When the move command is selected, a list of all the troops stationed at this base will be displayed. Review the combat power of the troops displayed and move powerful troops over to fortify base. So, in this game, knights and monsters move together as a troop. Troops are made of rune knight that leads a collection of monsters, while the monsters alone cannot be moved to the another base. Yeah, in every condition, uh, the troops need a leader, if I understand correctly. This time we will be moving Rubino, the nation's ruler and one of his foremost knights, Shizzler. Press left button to move all troops or select more than one troop with right button. For now use the right button to select Rubino and Shizzler. Use right button to select Rubino's troops. Alright. And Shizzler troops. So. Then confirm that selection and troops to be moved will be shown as above. Alright. Next, use a directional pad or left stick to move cursor to Lorenz and press B button. Alright. Send troops to Lorenz. Alright, that's it. To the order to send out troops is complete. Let's check to see if the order has been given correctly. Close the base menu with A button. Then move the cursor over the Lorenz again. Yeah. We're gonna check it. Yeah. Rubino and Shizzler have not started moving yet, but when a destination is active, an arrow will point from the current location to it with information available for you to check. Alright. As long as there is a pathway to your base leading to the destination, your troops will reach their destination base by the next phase, no matter how distant. Alright, good work. Now that you have given more move orders to your troops, it's time to look at the next phase. Press the V button to enter organization phase and proceed to attack phase. Use V button to end phase. Alright. And... What was the V button, dude? Oh yes, that's the select button on controller. This is the attack phase. Any move orders given in the previous phase will be carried out now. Alright. Let's see if Rubino and Shizdar's troops have arrived at Lorenz safely. The cursor is still on Lorenz since you ordered troops to move here in the previous phase. Notice Rubino and Shizdar's icons on the bottom right of the screen displayed with the base information for Lorenz. Press B button to open the base menu. Yeah, this is the base menu. And this menu has different options during the attack phase. Select the attack command to invade enemy bases. Note, however, the troops recently moved from another base cannot be directed to attack an enemy base immediately. Select the attack command to see this ruling effect. Yeah, it's grey, grey colored, so it's uh, it means those, those troops are unavailable to move or attack. Like the move command, the attack command will show you which troops can be ordered to launch an attack. As Rubino issues their troops were moved recently, their troops are darkened, indicating they cannot be ordered to attack. Press A button twice to return to the main map for now. Okay. Good work, completing all of the objectives in this tutorial. This tutorial focused, focused on troop movement. The next tutorial will explain how they attack enemy bases. Yeah, so... So what do you think about this game? Do you want to start organized in wait tutorial next? Yeah, let's go, bro. Let's check it out. Let's uh, let's make a battle. Organization phase. Yeah, this is a turn-based game, like a boxed game or turn-based RPG games. 
Welcome to the world of Brigant and the Legend of Renersia. This tutorial will, ac will explain the controls while you play the game. In this tutorial you will learn about troop organization and the steps necessary for an enemy base invasion. First confirm that Rubino and Shizzler troops are stationed. Lawrence. Next check the base information for Warren, the target enemy base, for your invasion. The key information to note here is the total combat power displayed about target base. Total combat power indicates the sum of the combat power of all enemy troops stationed at the, at the base. Generally the base with the bigger number will have the advantage. Yeah, my total power is 7752 uh, and the enemy's total power is 6335. Yeah, my troops are bigger and maybe more powerful than my enemy. Currently your total combat power is higher than the enemy's, but let's increase this number to ensure victory. <clears throat> Specifically, we will be adding monsters to Rubino's troops. Open the base menu with B button. And the objective this time is to organize your monster. Select the troop command from the base menu with B button. Troop command. Yeah, these are units. On the troop screen, the, there are a number of options to help, your, help you prepare for your invasion. As previously mentioned, monsters will be added to Rubino strips. Select the units command. Alright. The unit menu is where you organize monsters by adding or removing them from trips. Take the unicorn from the standby menu and add it to the trip. But first, let's take a closer look at the two important parts of troop organization. Rumpo and Magic Cost. Let's start with the Knight's Magic Cost. This number indicates the limit of the combined Rumpo of the monsters in the Rune Knight's trips. Each Knight's Rumpo or Rune Power is different and increases with their level. Up to 6 monsters can be placed into a troop as long as their combined Magic Cost does not exceed the total Rune Power. Yeah. Take a look at the combined magic cost of the monsters in the Rubino strips. Notice that his room power is 215, but he is currently only using 155, so has 60 remaining. Now let's look at the magic cost. This refers to the magic cost unit required to a placed monster into a trip. Take a look at the unicorn in the standby menu. A magic cost of 40 is displayed below the icon. Since we already know Rubino has 60 left of his room power, the unicorn can be placed into his troop as it only has a magic cost of 40. Looks like everything is in order. Now let's go ahead and place the unicorn into the troop. First select an empty slot on Rubino's troop with the B button. Alright. And now select the unicorn, right? Most of the values are here are stats like HP, MP or attack, all of which affect the unit's combat power. To get a basic idea of unicorn strength, look at its combat power. Press the B button to place unicorn into troop. Yeah, I have added this unicorn to my troop. Now it's in troop. You can also use the same steps in reverse to move the unicorn from the standby menu. With the unicorn in Rubino's troops, you can see that his troop combat power has gone, while the room power available for use has gone down. All right, press A button three times to return to the main menu map. To the main map. Okay. After adding the monsters to troops, the next step is to invade an enemy base. Press the V button to end organization phase and start the attack phase. All right. Which button? Oh yeah, that one. Let's give Rubino and Shizzler's troops are order to attack the enemy base of Warren. Remember that you can only attack an enemy base that is adjunct to one of your own bases. Okay. Put the map cursor over Lawrence and press the B button to bring up the base menu. Select attack from base menu. Select attack command. A window with the troops available for an invasion will appear. Now we need to select Rubino and Schisler. Yeah, right button. And right button again to choose Schisler. 
and confirm that. Now I'm gonna choose the base. Right. Alright. Then you give out the command to attack and arrow point points from the attacking base to the defending base, similar to the move command. Now you are ready to invade the enemy base. Good work completing all of the objectives in this tutorial. This tutorial focused on troop organization and invading enemy bases. Next tutorial will explain combat. Alright, I wanna see the action, man. Battle basics, let's go. Battle of Warren. Battle Basics Tutorial Welcome to the world of Brigantine. Alright, this tutorial will explain the controls while you play the game. Yeah, generally speaking you win a battle by driving away all enemy troops or defeating the ruler. Knights will retreat wounded if their HP is reduced to zero, but monsters with no HP are destroyed. When a knight retreats, all monsters in their troop retreat as well. When a ruler retreats, all other knights of the nation will also retreat and the battle ends. All battles are turn-based. The turn ends once all troops on the both sides have finished their actions. Knights with a higher level will act first. The knight's nice face icons on the right mark the action sequence. Invaders have a sword icon, defenders with a shield. A monster's troop is marked with an A, B or a, a C. Higher level knights act first. So there may be changes to the action sequence at the start of a turn if a knight gains a level during combat. Yeah, this game is a somehow complicated turn-based system, but we're gonna get it. Schizzler's turn. Let's take a look at the some combat commands. During a troop section, the H bar, HP bar of the knight and master's units in the troop will be highlighted in white. It's time for Sizzler's troop action, so the icons of units that can perform an action are highlighted. Knight of a troop will have their HP bar adorned with a crown as they are the leader of the troop. When the HP of the leader drops to zero, all monsters in the troop will retreat. First, let's try moving Shizzler. So. Okay, go there. Skill and standby options are displayed so that you can select your next command. Yeah, standby is something like wait command. Move troop near Schindler. Here. This is Simurk. Oh, Simurk is a legendary uh, bird. Something like Phoenix in Eastern mythology or Persian mythology. Move troop near Schindler. And what is that monster? Gigas. High Lizardman. By the way, this game shows all the things, all the tricks. So there are no. There are n not so many things for me to think and to plan. Next is the enemy troop section. The current action sequence of all the troops on the battlefield can be viewed on the right of the screen. You can see that after the enemy troop completes their action, it will be Rubino's turn. Alright, this is enemy's turn. And look at those monsters, they look like some weird Pokemons. Now it's Rubino's troop action, but first here is an explanation about the role of rulers on the battlefield. Ruler refers to the leader of a nation. If a ruler's HP drops to zero, that nation will lose the battle, even if there are still other allies left on the battlefield. So. We need to protect the ruler. That is the rule one. Therefore, the ruler must stay out of the enemy's attack range. The opponents this time aren't very strong. However, so you can move him toward the front line. March toward the enemy. Alright, dude. Alright, samurai. Repeat the process with all monsters in Rubino's troops. 
After Rubino's troop action, all ally and enemy actions are complete. This marks the end of the first turn of the battle. Oh, there's a wyvern here. That's cool. And the frost dragon. Um, first turn is over. Let's go to the second turn. Turn two. That's it for the basics of the troop movement and controls during combat. Next, we will explain command range and try moving our units based on this new knowledge. First, let's take a look at the command range. Command range, the area in which the area in which a rune knight leader is able to use their mana to give orders to the monsters in their troop. Hover the cursor over a unit and some colored hexagons around the commanding knight show up. These colored hexagons show the command range. If a monster moves beyond this range, their strength is reduced. Note, monsters outside their knight's command range are indicated by an icon. Terrain effect. The affected terrain is a unit that can be used to give yourself an advantage in combat. Each battle map hexagon has its own terrain type. A unit's preferred terrain will affect their mobility, accuracy and evasion. Terrain effect is shown at the bottom of the screen. The left shows current terrain effect and the right shows terrain effect after moving. Yeah, that's a detailed turn-based game, friends. As it is time for Shizzler's troop action, move him closer to the enemy in order to attack. Move the monsters in Shizzler's troop to spaces within his command range. Move Shizzler's troops. Movement type is categorized as planes. This is the most common type of movement category among units. These units move well on the flat terrain, but suffer a penalty in accuracy and evasion on other terrain. Always check the terrain when moving your units, yeah. You need to check and calculate the right terrain when you play the game. Also, though these units can walk further distances, beware of moving units too far forward as they may become surrendered by enemies. So let's move this guy here. Monsters with wings such as Seamurg are categorized as sky. Yeah, these are flying units. Because these units fly, they have no issues moving around on any terrain. However, that also means they have no preferred terrain. Yeah, that's cool. Keep in mind that they are weak against units with that use bows such as centaurs or hunters. Monsters like the Gigas that have an advantage on mountain terrain are categorized as mountain. These units gain accuracy and evasion boosts on mountain terrain. However, these stats will decrease when fighting on forested or watery terrain. Yeah, I think every monster or unit uh, have a um, um, favorite um, terrain or favorite terrain to fight or defense. So we need to know that and we need to fight with that information monsters like the high lizard men that have an advantage on watery terrain are categorized as swamp these units gain accuracy and evasion boosts on watery terrain however these stats will decrease when fighting on rocky or forested, forested terrain how can I um, remember all these things, all, the, all those stuffs, I don't know. There are units with other terrain types as well, so be sure to check during battle. So let's go. Brave Trust, alright. Oh, my monster counter-attacked. Ooh, critical hit. And Rockross gained some experience. Cool. Now the battle will begin in the earnest. Use an allied allies troop to attack the enemy. 
Rubino is in position to use spells to attack. All those spells cost MP, mana points. There is no fear of being countered and spells generally have a 100% hit rate. However, spells cannot be used after a unit has just moved. Yeah. To use a spell, select Rubino and choose the forest spell from the magic menu. Cast Frost. Yeah. Frost deals moderate damage to a single enemy unit within a 3 hex radius. Yeah, I think. I think I will use against that. Ah, that's not so powerful. Yeah, I have learned how to cast a spell. The unicorn is in position to use a healing spell. Cool. Healing spells consume MP to recover HP or heal status conditions. Like attack spells, they cannot be used after a unit has just moved. To use a spell, select unicorn and choose the heal spell from the magic menu. Yeah, heal. Restores a major amount of HP to one ally unit. Just one ally unit within a 3 hex radius. And let's let's heal my frost dragon. Oh, that's nice. If a unit is adjunct to enemy after moving, they may attack by selecting a skill from the skills menu. Move to Wyvern and select skills to attack the enemy. Now, I'm gonna use Tail Whip. Normal attack deals moderate dam damage to a single adjunct, adjunct enemy unit. Before the attacking, always check the battle forecast panel. From the left to the right, you can see values that represent the critical rate. Accuracy and power of attack. Yeah, so many stats and so many details. That JRPGs, guys. Critical rate shows the chance of landing a critical blow. Accuracy is the proba probability of the skill actually connecting. And powerful refers to the damage the attack will deal. Similarly, a forecast about how much counter damage the enemy will deal is displayed together with other stats as well. If, a, uh, if the unit's HP displays will show how much the HP is expected to remain should the opposing unit land their attack. Now press the B button to execute your attack. <coughs> All right. Good work completing all of the objectives in this tutorial. This tutorial focused on the basics of combat. Next tutorial will explain combat strategies that were not covered in this tutorial. Do you want to start combat strategies tutorial next? No, I don't like it. I don't want to start it. Uh, I'm gonna play that later. Uh, enough tutorial uh, for now. There are combat strategies, quest rewards and tips for class changes. But I, uh, I want to uh, see the main campaign. So, what are my options to choose? And Let's check out the story. Ware la ga daichi Luna Gio. Kono sekai o tozure shi sonata yo. Miru ga i. Kono chide wa inishie no kanata yori hitotoki mo mana no shower ga yamu koto wa nai. Mana wa yeah, this Japanese narrative is cool. Kodai no monster or shokan sase, 
意のままに従わせる術さえもな、yeah. いつしか彼ルーンの騎士と呼ばれるようになったのじゃ It seems like やがてルーンの騎士たちはマナの力に追い立てられるように高みを目指した剣と知力魔法によって己の人間を広げ必要とあらば敵対するルーンの騎士を打ち破ったいくつもの国が生まれそしていくつもの国が消え去ったその歴史は行くたびか繰り返されることになった、so、which, which faction to pick? Which faction is your favorite one in this game? You can write it on comments, comments section below. あるいは送信部にはそれぞれルーンの神から授かった五つのマナストーンが組み込まれてあったのじゃブリガンダインを身につけたルーンの騎士はそれはそれは他の騎士を圧倒したのじゃよ大陸の覇権をかけた戦いは師匠ルーナジア戦記に克明に綴られ同時に戦いを通して我らが知り得たある大切な真実も記されることとなっただがあるルーンの騎士によってルーナジア全土が統一されると師匠はまるでそれを見届けたように戦火の中に消滅してしまったのだこの世界を訪れしそなたよ今ブリガンダインは正義公義そして自我の5つそなたにはそのいずれかを身にまといあるいは身にまとうことなく歴史に習い大陸制覇に向かう6つの道があるそしてそなたがルーナジアの各地を支柱に収めてゆくたびに師匠ルーナジア戦記の失われたページはよみがえってくることだろう。しかるに統一を果たしたとき、そなたは知るのだ、like、このルーナジアで起きた戦国時代ペリオジャパン。そして、あらゆる物語を。Runersia, year is 781. Five nations and one tribe plunged the land of Runersia into a new area of chaos. Six rulers and their rune knights threw themselves into the flames of war, each with their own hopes and expectations. Yeah, let's check out Norzaleo Kingdom, Republic of Guimul, Shinobi Tribe. Holy Gustava Empire, Mana Silesia, Silesia Theocracy, and United Islands of Mirelva. And what are the specs about this, these nations? What are their advantages and disadvantages? I cannot see. But I like that woman. She is the daughter of Alden Uzala, the bedridden 15th president of the Republic of Guimol. The sword of Ange awakens upon realizing the danger the country faces and tasks her with a life changing mission. Previously, previously, a ballerina performing with a secret identity, she must now accept her fate to the dawn, the brigandin of glory, and perform on the stage of battle. Yeah, she has 8 bases, 12 total knights, 905 mana reserve, and 35 total master, masters. And check the difficulty. 
it will be normal. And I have picked the Republic of Guimol. I don't know the story. Guide will play when you take an action for the first time. This can be configured to be skipped in advance. Skip this guide. No. So let's see the first scene and finish the video. Council of Rune Knights, Republic of Guimol. Gu in the self-proclaimed birthplace of Rune Knights, the sitting president Alden Uzala has not made a public appearance in a half year. There was a name. There was a movie named Uzala, Des Uzala, or something like that, of uh, Akira Kurosawa, the famous Japanese um, filmmaker. Dersu Uzala, right? The name of the movie was Dersu Uzala. And the president, Alden Uzala, can do little against the unending passage of time. Alright, let's skip those silly dialogues. <laughs> or not dialogues, he's talking by himself. <laughs> and the Japanese love. Alright, let's play the game. Enough cinematics. Alright, let's skip that. Yeah, I'd like to skip that and start the game. Okay. Organization phase. So, this is our map and there are other factions, green ones, blue ones, purple ones and grey ones. Red and orange and the other things. We are red ones with two dragon flags. And the tutorials, tips and guides. It's continuing. And let's check the other menus. Yeah, there are so many details about the game if you want to learn it. But it's enough for now. Let's turn back to the main menu. And this is Brigand and the Legend of Runertia. You saw the game. And I think it's it has so many details to learn and an interesting story uh, with Japanese anime and Total War series, a combination of uh, two different game types, I think. So that's the game. And thank you for watching, friends. And please subscribe my channel if you like the video and comment in, uh, in the comment section below and take good care of yourself. See you later.